Good morning our viewers. Welcome to our lesson today. Our lesson today is we are going to discuss money that is the topic and the subtopic is bills. I hope you are all set. Get ready with your pens, with your books so that we can learn together. So our topic is money. The subtopic is bills. So we are going to start by stating the lesson objective. The lesson objective. So and the objective of the of the lesson is by the end of the lesson we should be able to solve problems involving bills. That is our objective of the day. By the end of the lesson we should be able to solve problems involving bills. So we are going to start by looking at some of the terms that are used um, in this topic or some of the terms that are related to bills. So number one, we have the word itself, the word bill. So what is a bill? A bill is normally issued by a seller to a buyer showing the list of items bought and their cost. So when you buy something, you're given a a list of whatever you have bought and their cost, that's what we call a bill. So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to prepare these bills and how to get the, the cost. Then we have another term, which is balance. Balance is the difference between the amount of money given out and the total cost of the items. For example, when you buy something, uh, maybe let's say that whatever you have bought cost 20 shillings and you have given out 10 shillings. So the person, uh, the seller is going to give you or to refer you back 10 shillings. The 10 shillings that you're going to receive, that is what we call the balance. It is the difference between the amount of money given out and the total cost of the items. Um, number three, we have what we call change. Change is the exchanging of money for the same amount of money, but in different denomination. So that means it is amount equal to, but in different denomination. For example, I have a hundred shillings notes, and I'm given maybe five 20 shillings notes. So that, that amount is, is equivalent, it's only that the denominations are different. So remember our currency, or the money exists in two currency, or in two denominations, that is in note form and also in, in coin. So the moment you exchange, you get the same amount of money but in different denomination, that is what we call, we call change. So those are some of the terms that you're going to come across as we deal with this topic or this subtopic, bills. Um, in this topic, we have some symbols that are used when you are, when you are calculating or when the moment you are getting our, the bill, we have those symbols that are used. For example, I'm going to li list them down. We have this sign. We have at par each and then we have four. These are some of the symbols that we come across any moment you are getting or you are calculating the bills. So this sign here, <coughs> we read it as at. This means that um, for you to calculate, this means this is the cost of every item. the cost of every item. At means also the same. It is the cost of every item. We have par to represent the cost of every item and each to represent the, the cost of every item. For example, uh, maybe I told that a bag of uh, one kg of sugar cost 50 shillings. And then you're told that maybe someone bought two kgs of sugar at 50 shillings. That means, because here we have been told that one kg cost 50 shillings, this at here represents one kg of sugar uh, at 50 shillings. So you're going to take the two kgs, you multiply by 50. Because this 50 is the cost of, of, one, sh of one kg of, of sugar. So at this sign, 
at per each means the cost of every item. And for you to get the total cost of all those items, you are required to multiply. Then we have another sign that they use. We have the word for. For shows the total cost. This one shows the total cost of the item. Of the items. So that means you are not required to multiply. You are not required to calculate. They have already given you the, the cost of all the items. Now, this subtopic or this uh, subtopic called bills is a very important topic, subtopic or rather. In KCP, all the years we receive or that is the, the test between an average of two questions on bills. So one question is set on preparing bills and getting the balance. And another question involves getting change. So today you are going to concentrate on the questions that, uh, that want us to get balance. That's what we are going to concentrate on today. So if you look at the KCP analysis for the last eight years, from 2018 to 2010, you can see uh, last year, that is 2019, uh, they didn't bring a question on balance. What they tested was uh, change. So 2018, question number 44 uh, was testing on balance. 2017, question number 23, tested on balance. That is, they asked how much remained. How much remained, um, that is the same as getting the balance. 2016, question number 32, they tested on balance. The same with que question, um, the year 2015, question number 41, they also tested on balance. Question number, um, oh, sorry, uh, year 2014, there was no question on balance, the same as uh, 2019, they tested only on how to calculate or to get change. 2013, question number uh, 13, they wanted the total cost. That is, we are supposed to calculate. They were supposed to prepare bills, and then you give the total cost of whatever was purchased. 2012, the question number 32 was also testing on the total cost. 2011, question number 6, the examiner tested balance. 2010 was in question number 6, the same question. Um, was also asking balance. So you can see that in this subtopic, it is very, very important to have mastered how to calculate and how to get balance and how to prepare these bills. So without wasting time, we're going to start by uh, looking at some of the examples here. We see how to calculate and how to get balance and how, first of all, to prepare a bill. So we are going to start by looking at example number one. Example number one. The price list of some items in a shop was as follows. Soap, 20 shillings per piece. Sugar, 45 shillings per kg. Bread, 20 shillings per loaf. Coffee, 80 shillings per 500 grams. And then we are told that Wanja bought three pieces of soap. 2 kg of sugar, 4 loaves of bread, 1 tin of coffee. How much did she receive as balance if she gave 500 shillings note to the shopkeeper? So we have that question with us there. In this question, number one, we are supposed to prepare a bill. We prepare a bill so that we can get the total amount of money that this person was supposed to pay. And from there, we are... Uh, we calculate the balance. And how do we get the balance? For us to get the balance, remember we said that balance is gotten by getting the difference between the total, the total of amount of money given out and the total cost of item. So we start by calculating or getting the total cost of those items. So we are told that this person bought three pieces of soap.
you bought three pieces of soap, two kgs of sugar, and four loaves of bread. one tin of coffee, one tin of coffee. Yeah, this is what that person bought, that is Wanja. And remember we had, uh, we had said that soap costed 20 shillings per piece, and then sugar costed 45 shillings per kg, and then we had bread. Bread costed 80 shillings per 500 grams. So this 500 grams is equivalent, is the same as a half kgs. So let's prepare her bill. We see how much she paid. So three pieces of soap, and a piece of soap costed 20 shillings each. So we are going to take the three pieces times the cost of one piece. This is soap. So three, three pieces times 20 shillings per piece. Here we get 60 shillings. The other one is two kgs of sugar, and one kg costed 45 shillings. So it is the number of kgs, two kgs, times the cost of one kg, which is 45. So it's going to be two times 45. We get 90 shillings. Then four loaves of bread. And one loaf costed 80 shillings. That is for, per 500 grams. So one loaf of bread is 500 grams. So we are going to take the number of loaves, which is four, times 80 so that is 4 times 80, we get 320. And then, oh, let me see the cost of, you have the cost of the coffee. Wait, wait, sorry. Bread costed 20 shillings. This was coffee. Let's correct here. So coffee, coffee was um, 80 shillings. Uh, 500 grams, sorry for that. And then we had bread, which costed 20 shillings per loaf. So here we are going to change this. Uh, bread costed 20 shillings, so it is 4 times 20, we get 80 shillings. Then one tin of coffee, a tin costed 80 shillings per 500 grams, and he bought one. So it is going to be 1 times, that is the number of tins, times the cost of one tin, which is 80 shillings. So one times 80, we get 80. So from there now we, we add, we get the total cost. So when we add here, we are going to get zero. Nine plus, nine plus six, we get 15. 15 plus, this is 16, then 15, we get 16, one, 31, 310 is the total cost of the items. So the total cost is 310 shillings. Then the question is, how much, how much did she receive as balance if she paid 500 notes to the shopkeeper. So this is the total cost of the items. So we get the balance. To get the balance, we take the, the amount that he gave, she gave 500 minus 310 shillings. So we borrow from here, we get four. Okay. 500 minus 500 minus 310. 4, 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we get the balance was 190 and 90 shillings. So that is example 1. We look at example 2. 
In example two, we have, uh, you are told, Njeri bought the following items. Three rolls of paper at 17 shillings per roll. Three quarter of potatoes, tomatoes at 30 shillings per kg. Two kgs packet of rice for 70 shillings. And then two bottles of juice at 70 shillings. Two kgs of sugar for 180 shillings. What balance did she receive if she paid for the items using 500 shillings? So it's the same, same uh, question. Uh, it is similar to the question that you have just done. So the first step is to calculate or to get the total cost of the items. That is to prepare the bill. After you prepare the bill, you get the balance. And to get the balance, you're supposed to take the the um, amount that this person gave the shopkeeper minus the total cost of the items. So let's do that. So we pre start by preparing the bill. So three rolls of paper, three rolls of paper, at 17 shillings, then we have three quarter, three quarter kgs, tomatoes at 30 per kg, and then two kg rice for 70 shillings, and then we have two bottles, two bottles of juice at 70 shillings, and two kgs sugar for 180 shillings. So we are preparing the bill first. So we look at the first thing. Three rolls of paper at 17 shillings. This art here means each roll costed 17 shillings. So we take 17 times three. The number of rolls, there are three, times the cost of one roll. We get one, 21, carry two, 51 shillings. Then we have three quarter kgs of tomato at 30 shillings per kg. So we take the number of kgs bought, it was three quarter times 30 shillings, the cost of one. So we simplify here by two, two by two, 15. 15 times three is 45 divided by, by two. By two, one, by two, two, two. So we get 22 shillings and 50 and 50 cents. Then we have two kgs um, of rice for 70 shillings. Four represents the total cost of the, of the item. So meaning the two kgs costed 70 shillings. So we'll come here and write 70 shillings for the two kgs of rice. Then we have two bottles of juice at 70 shillings. At means the cost of one item. So it is two, the number of bottles times the cost of one bottle. So it is two times 70, we get 140 and 40 shillings. Here we have two kgs sugar for 180. Four represent the total cost. So the two kgs of sugar costed 180. So two kgs sugar, 180 and 80 shillings. So we add this to get the total. So you can use this because you have the cents. So this is 51 shillings, zero cents, plus 22 shillings and 50 cents. Then we add to 70 shillings, zero cents, plus 140 shillings and zero cents. And then 180 shillings. So we are getting the total. Ah, yeah. So when you add here, you are going to get 50, 50 cents. 1 plus 2 plus 0, we get 3. 
5 plus 2, 7, 7 plus 7, 14, 14 plus 4, 18, 18 plus 8, we get 26. I write 6, we carry 2. 2 plus 1 plus 1, we get 4. So the total cost of the items was 463, 463 shillings and 50 and 50 cents. So the question is, what balance did she receive if she paid for the items using 50 shillings, 500 shillings? So we get the balance. To get the balance, we take the 500 shillings note that was given out. We subtract the 463 shillings and 50 cents. So here we have 0 cents and we have 50, 50 cents. We borrow a shillings from this side. This was 500. If I borrow a shillings, I'm going to remain with 499 shillings. That shillings is equivalent to 100 cents. So this side I'm going to have 100 cents. 100 cents minus 50 cents, I get 50 cents. 9 minus 3, I get 6. Then 9 minus 6, we get 3. Then 4 minus 4 is 0. So that means the balance is going to be 36 shillings, 50 cents. So that was the balance that that person got. That is, Jerry got a balance of 36 shillings and 50 and 50 cents. Now, with that, we are going to go to, to look at some of the KCP questions. So they are very similar to what we have done. We look at some of the questions that have been set uh, in the past years. And you're going to start with uh, the question in year for year 2018, question number 44. Question number 44, 2018, KCP. And the question is, Abdi bought the following items. Five loaves of bread at 40, 42 shillings, a half kg of meat at 36, per, 360 per kg, a half kg of margarine for 150 shillings, four and a half kg of rice at 72 shillings per kg, two bars of soap at 105 shillings. What was his balance if he paid using three 500 shillings note? Mm -hmm. We go to the question, we calculate, see what you were supposed to do. Or those people who did uh, that KCP 2018, what they were required of them. The first thing is to prepare the bill. So five loaves of bread, five loaves of bread at 42 shillings, then a half, a half kg of meat at 360 shillings per kg. We have a half kg margarine for 150 shillings and then we have um, four and a half four and a half kg of rice at 72 shillings per kg and then we have two bars of soap at 100 105 at 105 shillings. So we start by preparing the bill. This is 105. So to prepare the bill is to get the total cost of the items. Five loaves of bread at 42 shillings. These ads here represent the cost of one item. So the, number, uh, the total number of items or the loaves were five multiplied by 42. 5 times 2 is 10. 
you write 0, you carry 1. 5 times 4, 20, plus 1, 21. 210 shillings. Then we have a half <coughs> kg of meat at 360 at the cost of 1 kg. That is each item. Because we are told it is 360 per kg. So we are going to take a half times 360 by 2, 1, by 2, 1, carry 1, 18 because of, no, 16 because of 8, 0, we get 180, 180 shillings is the cost of 1, that is a half kg of meat, then we have a half kg of margarine for 150 shillings, 4, that is the cost of the item, so margarine costed 150 and 50 shillings. Then we have four and a half kg of rice at 72 shillings. Four and a half. We change this four and a half to an improper fraction. So you're going to have four and a half, four times two plus one. This is eight, nine. We get nine over two. So I'm going to use nine over two instead of four and a half. Nine over two times 72. We have this at. So by 2, 1, by 2, 36. So I have 36 times 9. 36 times 9. 9 times 6 is 54. I write 4. I carry 5. Then 3 times 9, 27. 27 plus 5. Um, 27 plus 5, I get 32. 324. Then we have two bars of soap at 105. Two times 105. 105 times two is, you get 10, catch one, then two. Get 210. Then from there we add to get the total, the total cost of those items. So this side we add 0 plus 0, 0, 4, and 0. We get 4. We only have one number there. Then 1 plus 8, we get 9. 9 plus 5, we get 14. 14 plus 2, we get 16. 16 plus 1, we get 17. I write 7. We carry 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 1, 4. Plus 1, 5. Plus 3, 8. Plus 2, 10. So the total cost, this is now the total, which is 1,074 shillings. Then the question was, what was his balance if he paid using three 500 shillings note? It was three 500 Shillings note. So three five hundred shillings note. It is three times five hundred, meaning one thousand five hundred. So the person Wanja gave one thousand five hundred shillings. We want to calculate the balance. The question wants us to get the balance. To get the balance. You take the amount of money that he, she gave out, which was 1,500, you less the amount of money or the total cost of the items. That is 1,500 minus 1,074. 1,500 minus 1,074, we less. So this it is very impossible, so we are going to borrow from this five. From five, we get four. I bring one here. I've borrowed a, a hundred. I borrow again, remain with nine. Ten minus four is six. Then seven minus nine minus seven, I get two. Four minus zero is four. One minus one is zero. So my balance is going to be four hundred four hundred and twenty-six shillings. So the balance was 426 shillings. 
So and that was the answer for that question. Then another question is 2017, KCP 2017, question number 23. <coughs> and the question reads, Juma was given two 100 shillings notes to buy the following items. Two kgs of meat at 400 shillings per kg. Two kgs of tomatoes at 300 per, per kg. One and a half kg of onions at 120 per kg. A half kg of, of potatoes at 40 shillings per kg. How much money would he remain with after buying the items? So the, uh, the question is uh, still want us to get the balance because it is asking how much money would he remain with after buying the items. So just like the way we have done the rest, we start by preparing a bill. So preparing the bill or a bill is the first step. So we prepare the bill to see how much he paid. So two kgs of meat, two kgs of meat at 400 shillings, and then two kgs tomatoes at 300 shillings, we have one and a half kgs of onions at 120 per kgs, and then we have a half kgs potatoes at 40 shillings per kgs. So how much did he pay? So first we, we get the total. It is the number of kgs for meat times the cost of one kg. Two times 400, we get 800. Then two times 300, two times 300, we get 600. And then we have one, one and a half kgs onions at 120. This one and a half, we change it to an improper fraction for the sake of multiplication. So this is one and a half. You take the whole number times the denominator plus the numerator. This is two plus one, we get three over two. So three over two times 120. By two, one, by two, 60. Three times 60, we get 180 shillings. Then I have a half kg's potatoes at 40 shillings. It is a half times 40. By two, one, by two, 20. So you come and add 20. So we are adding to get the total. So when I add this side, I get a zero. Eight plus two, ten. Zero, carry one. One plus eight is nine. Nine plus six, fifteen. Fifteen plus one, sixteen. That is one thousand, one thousand six hundred shillings. That was the total cost. And then, we had been told that Juma was given Juma was given two 100 shillings to buy the, Juma was given two, supposed to be two 1,000, two 1,000 shillings notes to buy the following items. How much balance or how much remained? So we're going to take the two, two times 1,000, two times 1,000 to get the total amount of money that Juma was given. Two times 1,000, we get 2,000. 2,000 minus 1,600. So we borrow one. 10 minus 6 is 4. So that means Juma got a balance of 400 shillings. A balance of 400 shillings. So that was the balance that that person received. 
Then we go to 2016. 2016, question number 32. The question reads, Halima bought the following items from a shop. 2 kgs of sugar at 120 shillings per kg. Then we have 4 packets. 4 packets of a half liter milk at 40 shillings. And then we have 1 and a quarter kgs cooking fat at 120 shillings per kg. 2 kgs of wheat flour for 210 shillings, 1 and a half kgs of salt at 24 shillings per kg. She paid for the items using two 500 shillings notes. How much balance did she receive? So I want to tell myself we are together. So we start by preparing the bill. 2 kgs sugar, 2 kgs of sugar at 120 shillings. And then we have four packets. Four packets of a half liter A half liter milk at 40 shillings each. And then we have one and a half kgs cooking fat. At 120 shillings each packages. Two kgs wheat, wheat flour uh, for 200 and 10 shillings and we have one and a half kgs salt at 24 shillings per kgs so we are getting that we are preparing the bill two kgs of sugar at 120 shillings so it is the number of kgs bought times the cost of one kg that is two times 120 shillings. 2 times 120, we get 240 shillings. Then 4 packets of a half liter milk at 40 shillings per packet. So th this means that one packet of a half liter costed 40 shillings and he bought four packets so these four packets each packet was a half liter and this one uh, this packet of one half uh, of a half liter costed 40 shillings so it's going to be four the number of packets bought times the cost of one packet which was 40 shillings four times 40 we get 160 160 shillings then you have one and a half kgs cooking fat um, at 120 shillings. This one and a half is the same as three items using two 500 shillings notes. Two 500 shillings notes. Two 500 shillings notes. So we get the total amount of money that she used to pay two times 500. We get a thousand. So meaning that the amount of money that she gave out was a thousand. We get the balance. To get the balance, we take the amount of money given minus the total cost of the items, which is a thousand shillings minus 796 shillings. So 10 minus 6, I get 4. 9 minus 9 is a 0. Then 9 minus 7, we get 2. So the balance was 204, 204 shillings. So and that's what she received as her balance. Oh, we are waiting up. We look at one more question, one or two more questions. Question number 41, 
for year 2015. 2015, question number 41. The question reads, the prices of items in a shop were as follows. One kg of sugar at 120 shillings, one kg of rice at 160 shillings, one kg cooking fat at 144 shillings, one loaf of bread at 44 shillings, Subira bought two kgs of sugar, one kg of rice, a half kg of cooking fat, three loaves of bread. She gave the shopkeeper a thousand shillings note. What balance did she get? As usual, we start by preparing the bill. We prepare the bill to get the total cost of the items. After you have gotten the total cost now, we subtract or we minus or we less from the 1,000 shillings note that this person gave the shopkeeper so that we can get the amount of money that remained. So let's go on and start by preparing the bill. So at one kg of sugar at 120 shillings, 1 kg sugar at 120 shillings, then 1 kg of rice at 160 shillings, and then we have 1 kg cooking fat at 144 shillings, and then 1 loaf of bread at 44 shillings. So these were the prices in the shop. And then we're told that this person, Subira, bought two kg of sugar and then bought a kg of rice. He bought a, a half kg of cooking fat and also three loaves of bread. So we are preparing her bill. If she bought two kgs of sugar, one kg costed 120. We have art here to mean the cost of a kg. So two kgs of sugar times 120, that is the cost of one kg. Two times 120, we get 240, 240 shillings. Then one kg of rice, a kg costed 160. So the number of kgs, one kg times 160. One times 160, we get 160 and 60 shillings. Then one kg cooking, a half kg cooking fat and a kg costed 144. So it is a half what was bought, a half, times the cost of a kg 144 by 2 1 by 2 14 because of 7 4 because of 2 72 that was the cost of a half kg of cooking fat then three loaves of bread a loaf costed 44 shillings so it is 3 the number of loaves bought times the cost of 1 which is 44 4 times 3 is 12. So I write 2, I carry 1. 4 times 3 again is 12 plus 1, 13. 132 and 32 shillings. Then we add to get the total. 2 plus 2 <coughs> is 4. 4 plus 6, we get 10. 10 plus 7, 17. 17 plus 3, we get 20. 0, carry 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1, 5, plus 1, 6. We get 604 shillings. Now, this was the total cost of the items. Or well, this was her bill now. Her bill was 604, and that's what she was supposed to pay. Then I told that she gave the shopkeeper a 1,000 shillings note. What balance did she get? We are calculating the balance, or we are getting her balance. 
remember to get the balance to get the balance you give you get the you take the amount of money that was given out minus her bill or the total cost that is a thousand minus 604 shillings we borrow from this one 10 we borrow again from here we get um, 9 we borrow again we remain with 9 I bring 1 now I have 10 10 minus 4 I get 6 9 minus 0 is 9 then 9 minus 6 is 3 so the balance that she received was 396 shillings. So and that was the balance, and that was the answer for that year. Yes. So we go to, so I want us to skip and go to, question, to year 2012. 2012, question number 32. Question number 32 for 2012 says or reads, Kyoko bought the following items to donate to a charitable organization. Two bags of cabbage at 2,500 shillings, four bags of potatoes at 2,000 shillings, 20 k uh, kgs of cooking oil for 2,000, 100 kgs of sugar, at 96 shillings 50 loaves of bread at 35 shillings then he was given a 10 percent discount for all his purchases how much did he pay for the item so in this question we are required to get the total cost how much did he pay so you're only preparing the bill after he was given the 10 percent discount how much did he add up uh, paying so we start by preparing the bill to get the total amount of money that he was required from whatever he bought. So two bags of cabbage. So two bags of cabbage. at 2,500 shillings, then four bags, potatoes, shillings, 2,000, 20 kgs of cooking oil for 2,000 shillings, and then we have a thousand, a thousand kgs, no, it's a hundred, a hundred kgs of sugar. At 96 shillings, and then 50 loaves. At 35, 35 shillings. So we get the true amount of money that this person used. Two bags of cabbage at 2,500. So the number of bags were two times the cost of one bag was 2,500. 2,500 times two, we get 5,000 shillings. Then four bags potatoes at 2,000. So it is the number of bags times the cost of one bag. Four times 2,000, we get 8,000. Then the 20 kgs of cooking oil costed 2,000. We have four to mean the total cost. So the cooking oil costed 2,000, 2,000 shillings. Then I have 100 kgs of sugar at 96 shillings. So it is going to be the number of kgs bought times the cost of one kg. That is 96 times 100. We get 9,600. And then 50 loaves of bread at 35 shillings each. So 50, the number of loaves, 
times the cost of one loaf of bread. So we take 35 times 5. We get 25, carry 2, 15, 17. So we get 1,750 shillings. Then from there we get the total. So we add here, we get a zero. This line we get um, five. Then you have six plus seven, 13. I write three, I carry one. One plus five is six. Six plus eight is 14. 14 plus two, um, 14 plus two is 16. 16 plus nine, we get 25. 25 plus one, 26. We get 26,350. And then we are told that this particular person was given 10% discount for all his purchases. So after uh, this was the true amount of money that he was supposed to, to pay, but he was given a 10% discount. So we get the 10% discount that he was given from this. And that means if he was given a discount of 10%, it means that he bought or uh, he paid at 90%. So first you get the, the discount. The discount was 10%. So it is 10 over 100 times 26,350. So meaning he was given a discount of 2,000. 2,635 shillings. So if this was the discount, it means that it was subtracted or it was less from the total amount that he was supposed to, to pay. So we take the 26,350, we subtract the discount. And the discount was 2,635. So here we're getting the, um, the total the total paid. The total paid after the discount. The total uh, amount of money that he paid after the discount. So we less. This is we borrow one. We remain with four. Ten minus five is five. Then four minus three we get one. Three minus six we borrow one from six. We remain with five. Thirteen. 13 take away 6 is 7. 5 take away 2, we get 3. And then 2. That means after the discount, he paid 23,715 shillings. That was the amount of money he paid for the items. After he was given the discount. Higher. So we have a question here. I want to, to answer a question. One question here. We are told, uh, there's a question here that says, Cargo bought the following items from a shop. Two, two kgs, tins of cooking fat at 380 shillings. Three kgs of rice at 84 shillings. Two kgs packet of unga for 65, 500 milliliters of paraffin at how much did he pay for the items? Higher. So in this question, the question is not complete, but I, I understand the question is, is uh -huh, that sign the same as multiply? Kim from, all right. So when you are doing bills, when you, when you see this sign, for the sake of Kim and the others, when you see this sign at, when they write at per each, the four symbols or the four signs means you multiply. So I think I've answered the question. So all of them means you multiply because they all show the cost of one item. The cost of one item. So that means you take the total amount of items and you multiply. So this sign at per and each, they all means you, you multiply apart from four. 
4 will always give you the total or the sum the total cost of the of the items so for 4 you don't multiply but for the rest you multiply so and i think i've answered that question so we have come to the end of our lesson um for your assignment you can go through the other kcp years check the questions try calculate them and try see what was required of those candidates so i want to wish you a good day and a blessed stay at home <laughs>